What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing more of a behind the scenes and I'm gonna teach you how I shoot and edit all my YouTube shorts. Let's get into it. So this is the area that I'm shooting most of my product B-roll. I have my key light here off to the right. I've got the Amaran 100D. Uh, it's a phenomenal light, uh, as well as I have the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 uh, that's got a grid on it that is kicking me my main light. I have a Nanlite Pavo tube, the version one, uh, just sitting over here on the side as well, bouncing off of just a white cardstock to fill in everything because I love this light. I love that it gives me dramatic look. However, I just want to bring up the overall ambiance and then I've got a nice little, you know, light in the background, a practical over here. I've got a another Nanlite Pavo tube, but this is the version two and I have it set to a blue to kind of fill in that background. So when I'm sitting there, you kind of have this teal and orange look going on. And then of course you're gonna need a product. I like to test it for a couple days, couple weeks, depending on what it is. Then I shoot the video. I do like to use my notes app in my phone. Uh, sometimes I'll write it down on a piece of paper or on the iPad if I'm in a hurry. Uh, and I will just get a general rough script. I'm normally not like scripting everything. I'm kind of giving bullet points of things that I want to hit. I'll go through that a couple different times in front of the camera uh, with everything set up. I will unbox it separately and then I'll just talk about the product. When I'm trying to get the top down shots for the unboxings, things like that, I am using a C stand and I have got a Falcam quick release system hooked up to the end of it. Again, it's quarter 20, so it just slides around on the end of it, works really well. And then I again am just shooting wide enough and I'm cropping that in in post. A lot of the times I am using my FX6 because I'm just shooting in 4K and I'm going out 1080, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes I will just use the FX3 and I will rig it up sideways because it's got all the quarter 20s on the outside of it and it works really well. And that's pretty much it. Then I take it over to the computer and we go from there. Now, before we jump into the edit of this YouTube short, let's talk about the sponsor of this video and that is Artlist. I've been using Artlist for years now and they have amazing plans, whether you're looking for stock footage and overlays, just music and sound effects, or you're looking for everything under the sun. One of my favorite things about Artlist Max specifically is A, I'm covered for every project that I shoot, whether I'm shooting for myself, commercial, freelance, documentary, weddings, I'm covered. They have blown me away by the AI they have now implemented into Artlist. If I'm looking at something like, let's say, a police car, their new AI stuff that's just in beta and is already blowing me away is adding a little tab that's gonna bring up sound effects that will fit that scenario. Another example, I looked up a bird on a branch and it brought up sound effects that fit perfectly for that. I didn't even have to go looking for it. Artless has always blown me away and they're continuing to step their game up. If you're looking to step your game up, I will have a link in the description below. You get two extra free months when you sign up for a yearly subscription using that link. Thank you so much for Artlist for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. Now that we have all our footage collected, it is time to start editing it and put the magic together. So the first thing we need to do is create a vertical timeline. So in the media pool, I just like to right click and go to timelines. I'm gonna go to create new timeline. I'm gonna select that. I do not wanna use the project settings, so I'm gonna uncheck that, go to format. I am gonna just do a 1080 timeline. Currently at the time of filming this, YouTube doesn't really like 4K resolutions for vertical content as well as I think Instagram and TikTok doesn't like it either. So we're gonna reverse this. We're gonna do 1080 by 1920 and that's gonna give us a nine by 16 instead of a 16 by nine. We are gonna make sure it's 24 frames because that's what I did it at. We're gonna hit create. It's gonna make a new timeline. Now, I did go ahead and save a little bit of time so you don't have to sit and watch me edit this entire thing. I am going to right click on my timeline and I'm gonna paste all the footage that I shot. You can see that I went on ahead and cut up a lot of the mess ups where the gaps are uh, and as well as I have all this B-roll laying out here. 
I normally like to go through, figure out the flow of the video. That does mean that it might be a little different than you thought when you originally shot it, but it's probably gonna come out looking a little bit better in the end. So I'm gonna get this all lined up. I think that's pretty good. I'm not gonna make you sit here and listen to me playing it through over and over and over again. Uh, I think that's great. The only thing I'm really not liking about this shot is it's a little off. So under inspector, I am going to grab the position X and I'm just gonna center it up a little bit. I think that's pretty good. I don't mind the jump cut right there, uh, but I am probably gonna punch that in just a little bit more, move it over so it's a little more dramatic. Yeah, it doesn't look so much like a jump cut. Now, one trick I do wanna point out is I like starting my video with the same sentence as I'm ending the video. So it's that loopable video. I know we've all seen it on TikTok. Uh, we've definitely seen it on YouTube Shorts to where you're starting a sentence, but it's also starting the video over again and it's got that seamless cut. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I went on ahead and did this take at the end and i'm going to go on go ahead and unmute my computer so see if you can hear it at the same time and that's why i believe these are a must-have if you are a filmmaker the mondo ties by condor blue side note if you're going to go in and edit this you really need to plan ahead when you're planning on uh, having it be this style sometimes you'll have happy accidents and it'll work out to where it can be loopable but not most of the time you need to plan ahead i was roughly playing ahead that i wanted it to be that way when i was scripting it out and getting an idea so what we're going to do is we're going to do this part right here and that's why i believe we're going to cut right there so i'm going to hit command b on a Mac, it's gonna go ahead and cut that. These are a must have if you are a filmmaker. And I'm gonna hit Command B right there. Because I say the same thing. The Mondo Ties by Condor Blue. I say the same thing there as I do right the here. The Mondo Ties by Condor Blue. And I think it just is more impactful on the other one. That's probably why I reshot this one. So we're gonna delete that. We don't need that. Uh, I am going to grab this clip right here and I am going to slide it at the beginning, just like so. Grab that, delete the space. These are have if you are a filmmaker. The Mondo Ties by Condor Blue. It is a pack of five cable ties. Yeah, that will I think that's really good. Now, of course, you can set this to be loopable when you're testing it. Up here, right underneath your uh, video player, you can hit this loop, click that, and it will actually loop it when you set an out point. So I'm gonna set an out point right here. The only thing is, is if you have all this B-roll sitting over here, you need to move it. Uh, you can either copy it, delete it, and then paste it when you're done, or I like to just bring it above it, shut that top layer off, and then you can play it through. I'm gonna mute that so you don't have to listen to me. You can see that it is playing it. It'll get to the very end, which I'm gonna go ahead and skip to, and then it's gonna loop back around and start flawlessly. I gotta say up front, I would not stress an insane amount on making videos that are loopable uh, because half the time people don't really care, half the time maybe they're not even sticking around to the end of the video. So that looks good, I'm happy with everything here. I've got all this B-roll I just basically shot of me picking up the object, uh, just uh, some of the products sitting there. I've got me attaching it to my camera, uh, and then I've got me putting the cable in, turning it sideways, uh, as well as just a shot of it in there looking nice and tidy. Uh, and then I've got like an unboxing style video. Uh, and then I've got me holding it up right here again, uh, because I think it looks a little bit better than that one right there. So I could always just set this one here if I want to cut this faster, which I think it does look better cutting it faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this stuff down real quick we are going to kind of chronologically go in order for this one specifically. So I don't think it makes sense having the product open when I haven't even showed like me opening it. So I'm going to have it be, we show the product and then immediately cut to me opening the product. Now, I mentioned it earlier, I sometimes do a top down shot. That's this one right here. If I reset that all together, it is actually, a lot smaller of a shot. That is the actual size of the shot. It is a 16 by nine. I had my camera set up already ready to go to shoot some other unboxing stuff. I knew that I was gonna be doing this, so I just kept it wide enough in 4K and I could punch in. Don't recommend doing that always, but you can get away with doing it. So I just zoomed in, 
centered it up. I knew that's pretty good. Uh, and then again, under transform inside the inspector, I flipped it, flipped it again. So that's actually the view that I was seeing. So now it looks a lot better. You would never know that that wasn't just a nine by 16 shot. I am gonna go ahead and immediately bump this into it faster. So we open it up, then we see the product sitting there. And then I want to go ahead and show me picking up the product. And then we're gonna go ahead and have me attaching it. Again, I'm not playing the audio, but I know what I said here. I'm basically talking about the product, how you attach it, how you hook the cables up, how they're durable. So I wanna keep that chronological order going. So I am attaching it. Then I'm putting the cable on, turning it sideways, and then I'm gonna be showing that the product is sitting, looking all nice and tidy. It really is just fine tuning it. Uh, that is completely up to you, and please don't follow my thing exactly to the T, but that's pretty much it. Um, it's really straightforward. You're just cutting it a nine by 16. That's all it is. I do it the same as I do any other product video, but I'm just doing it in order or depending on what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't even wanna show unboxing. Maybe I'm just talking about how this product changed my life with this one thing, and all I need to show is me using the product and how it changed. At that point, I don't really think you need an unboxing. You don't really need a lot of beauty B-roll shots. It just fit good for this style of video. Either way, I hope you got something good out of this video and learned something new. You're amazing, I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.